Hi, John Baker here from Rotac Repair. I'm standing beside a trike that suffered a in-flight power loss and then engine stoppage. It uh, was brought in for me to assess the reason that it did that. So the first thing that I did, uh, which is, uh, you've probably seen in some of my other videos that I'm always talking about, if the engine stops, has a sudden stoppage, really lays down badly, first thing you need to do is inspect the cylinders and the pistons visually to see if there's any scoring. Did it seize or did it not seize? There's no point in fooling around with saying, well, maybe it's the gas filter when actually it partially seized or it was seized and it freed up after. So uh, what I did with it was a, a video inspection with my bore scope to all the places that I can get to. You can't get to every place in these engines with the bore scope, but definitely enough to see that it's not a cylinder or a piston issue. The cylinders still have a nice cross hatch on it and the rings are free. So move along now and let's look at the fuel system. Uh, the reason I went right to the fuel system is the chances of it having a dual ignition failure at the same time pretty much slim to none as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I took the bowls off and in the bottom I found a lot of contamination. Uh, definitely not fuel look like maybe phase separation which is when there's water and alcohol mixed together at any rate whatever the contamination was is the reason that it did lose power on departure and then it, it stopped it just was not getting enough fuel flow to make any power so what did i do with it so as i said i did the uh, cylinder the cylinder video inspection on it with the bore scope no problems found yes found problems in the carburetor cleaned them, made sure all the passes were clean, had them apart, put them back together. Um, I didn't end up putting any parts in it as of yet. There is a little bit of uh, uh, corrosion on the float bowls, but for the purposes of what I'm supposed to do with this, it's not an issue right now. So what we want to do now is start it and see how it runs. So after cleaning the carburetors and reassembling them I didn't want to reintroduce any contamination into the fuel system for the purposes of this run so I have my 50 to 1 mix run can there I have it into the uh, fuel filter from the airframe I've disconnected it from the fuel tank on the airframe and I've used the primer bulb and pushed fuel through to completely flush any contamination out that was there before so I've flushed the, uh, the fuel pump and all the lines and everything so that now I'm sure that I can run this and the carburetors are going to receive fresh fuel. Due to the fact that there is probably some wiring damage in the front of this aircraft, I decided because I only want to run the engine, I disconnected the harnesses from the airframe itself. And here is my two leads that are actually going to be my ground out leads for the ignition and because I don't have access to have the electric starter solenoid work I'm just jumping it with a booster battery right at the solenoid to make the engine crank now the engine is fully warmed up uh, now that's complete uh, now we'll do the uh, run up check the ignition so I'll be taking each one of these as an ignition I'll be grounding them onto the bolts here to see how that uh, turns out with as far as RPM drop
Here's the result of a successful diagnostic strategy. Check the big ticket item first. Did it seize up or not? So the cylinders, the pistons were fine. We move on to the fuel system. Find a definitive problem in the fuel system. Clean it, correct it. And now the engine runs fine again. I will put this engine back in the service. Now, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And please, if you like this video, I have others. Subscribe. You might like some of those. Hopefully, they'll help you out. Thank you very much again.